We have come this afternoon for the initial sermon of Sister Tony. Uh, now, in the old church, they used to call it a trial sermon. Uh, we don't call it a trial sermon here at Second Baptist because we don't try people. Amen. Only God can Amen. try people. That's right. That's right. So this is her initial sermon, not a trial sermon. When someone comes to me and says, Pastor, there's a calling on my life, I say, hey, that's good. Now you go pray. <laughs> and come back next week. And that's right. And if they come back the following week, I say, okay, this week you and I are going to pray, so go on back and pray some more. Amen. And then I said, if it's still there, come back next week. And I said, if that's the case, now you bring your spouse and all three of us going to pray. Amen. Amen. And, and then after a series, because... And the only reason I do that is because the Bible tells us we've got to be absolutely sure of the call on our life. It's the only scripture in the Bible where God says, if you put your hand to the gospel plow, then turn away. You're not fit for the kingdom of heaven. So I ask them to be sure. And so we've been praying. And, and Tony and I have been talking and praying and, and ministering for a long time. And there's no doubt in my mind that God has a call on her life. So church, we are not here to try. We are not here to judge. Amen. We're here to pray. Amen. Now let me remind you now, she doesn't have to sound like anybody. Amen. She doesn't have to be like anybody. Amen. So if you came in here with your high hopes on what she going to sound like, you pray. I've asked her to give us what God gave her. Amen. No more, no less. Amen. And then God will get the glory. Amen. Amen. God will get the glory. Amen. We're going to ask our choral ensemble will come. And following that, Sister Tony, take your time. Amen. You share with us what God has given you Amen. for a day such as this. Amen. Amen.
Father God, I just thank you for this day, Lord Jesus. I thank you that you have been walking with me for a long time. You have been walking with me, Father God, when I didn't even know you were walking with me. But I thank you, Father God, for your goodness and your grace and your mercy and your love, Father. I can't do anything without you, and I'm not going to even try. So, Father God, I'm asking you to be right here with me, Father God, right now, Lord. Father God, let your mouth be my mouthpiece, Father. So, Father God, I'm praying all these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name, I pray. Amen. 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 First, give an honor to God who is the head of my life Amen. and giving honor to the shepherd of this church, Amen. my church, my pastor, Reverend Dr. Nathan and Edmund. Amen. My scripture will be from 1 John 4, 7, 8, and it reads, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, yeah. for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. Yeah. The title is it's all about love. All right, all right. Yeah. Amen. Help us, Lord. Oh, that Lord. Yeah. Help us, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you know the word love is mentioned in the Bible 310 times in the King James Version? Amen. It's mentioned 131 times in the Old Testament and 179 times in the New Testament. Each it depends on what translation of the Bible that you're using. The word love must have been very important to be used so many times in the Old and New Testament of the Bible. You know, the first time the word love was used was in Genesis 22 2. And it reads, take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, mm -hmm. and go to the land of Moriah. Go and sacrifice him as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will show you. You know, God was testing Abraham yeah. to see if he would be obedient and trusted him. And since we're talking about love, let me tell you, there are four unique forms of love. Well, all right. I know some of you are probably thinking to yourself, love is love. Mm -hmm. But no, they are broken down. They are communicated in four Greek words. Well, Eros, mm -hmm. Storge, Phileo mm -hmm. and agape. That's right. Most of us have heard the word agape love. Mm -hmm. Well, let me break down the four stages of love to you. All right. Phileo love is a friendship love. Yeah. Eros love is an erotic, sexual, or passionate love. Yes. Storge love is a familial love. For example, love of a parent toward a child or offspring, husband, wife, father, son, etc. And agape love is an unconditional love. Agape love is the highest form of love. Agape love is considered to be the love originating from God, from mankind. In John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Yes. Yes. You know, love is so important that we sing songs about love, yeah. quote poems about love. Mm -hmm. We sing songs such as, You know love makes the world go round. <laughs> what the world needs now is love, sweet love. And we know that familiar song that we love to sing during Mother's Day. I'll always love my mama. She's my favorite girl. But I remember when our children were young, we used to always play Dusties. For those of you who don't know what Dusties are, they're old songs that some of us grew up on. Well, My son used to say, those old songs, I don't like those old songs. And I said, well, I said, but those are the songs that we used to listen to. And he said, but y'all was all in love then. And I said, I guess we were. <laughs> Thank you, Father God. 
I don't know if they sing much about love in a secular world today, but maybe they should. Now, as a child, you, you may remember the first song you may have learned about Jesus loving you. Yes. It went like this. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, yes Jesus loves me. Yes. yes, Jesus loves me. For the Bible tells me so. Yeah. And then you may remember the other song that we used to sing. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red, brown, yellow, black, or white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. But let me tell you something. God wants us to love our fellow man. When we love our fellow man the way God wants us to love, he gives us an unshakable joy, unspeakable joy. He gives us peace. A charitable heart, a sympathetic heart, mm -hmm. a giving heart, yes. a caring heart, yes. a kind heart, yes. a patient heart, yes. an encouraging heart, yes. an empathetic heart, and a forgiving heart. Yes. Do you know that love is an action word? Yes. Right. You don't only want to hear someone say they love you without showing you That's their right. love. Yeah. That's right. When someone truly loves you, they are there for you like your ride or die. That's right. They are there to celebrate you. Yes. They're happy if you get a promotion on a job. Yes. They're happy if you have a baby. They're happy when you graduate from college. Yes. You get accepted into a school that you yes. apply for. Get engaged. Get married. Purchase a home. Get good grades in school, yes. etc. Yes. When someone truly loves you, yes. they will motivate you. Yes. Inspire yes. you. Yes. They are there cheering you on. They respect you and your opinions. Yes. They are not judgmental. You can confide in them and don't worry about whatever you say to them is going to go anyplace else. Well. They will encourage you. They'll support you in all your endeavors in life. They'll forgive you and will give you constructive criticism. Yes. They are trustworthy. They're loyal and they're honest to you and they hurt when you hurt, yes. they will even put you first. Yes. This is what we call unconditional love. Yes. The love God has for us and the love God wants us to have for each other. Yes. That's a agape love. Now, sometimes we can use the word a little too loosely. For instance, I love those shoes. I love that dress. I love chocolate. I love that shirt. I love that song. I love that TV show. You get the idea of what I'm talking about? Yeah. You have people that say they love you just to get what they want from you. Mm. God wants us to love one another. In 1 John 4.20, it says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. Yes. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. Right. Let me tell you something. It can be hard to love some people. People can be moody, they can be cruel, hateful, prejudiced, racist, jealous, envious, miserable, hurtful, spiteful, mean, and even so much more. But you know what? God wants us to love the unlovable. We have to always remember that whatever the Lord commands us to do, he's going to give us the power of the Holy yes, Spirit to accomplish yes, it. Yes, right. First Corinthians 13, 7 says, love never gives up, yes, right. never loses faith, yes. always hopeful, Amen. and endures through every circumstance. Yes. In Matthew 22, 37 to 39, the two greatest commandments are love the Lord your God yes. with all your heart, yes, with all your soul, yes. with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. These two commandments basically cover all the other commandments. But God commands us to love him and to love our neighbor as ourselves. Yes. If we are trying to be Christ-like, we have to love like Christ. Yes. Well, we have to love people with all their flaws, yes. ugliness, and inconsistencies. Uh -huh. I'm speaking this because we, I mean we all, including myself, have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Yes. You know, sometimes, 
Our families, our children included, can be some of the hardest people to love <laughs> because we sometimes take each other for granted. Yes, yes. We, as family members, hurt each other with our words, mm -hmm. our actions, mm -hmm. and so much more. Families sometimes treat each other like we're not related. We feel that since we are family, we get some sort of pass. <laughs> Sometimes family members feel they get a pass to disrespect you and treat you any old kind of way because as we say, that's family or we're family. Mm -hmm. It can hurt even more when your family member does some type of injustice to you because we are family. Sometimes it makes you wonder if God has placed difficult family members in your life to prepare you for some of the people you will encounter later on in your lifetime. Most of the time, it doesn't hurt as much when the person is just any person on the street. Because most likely we won't even see that person again. Our own children, even the grown ones, can be disrespectful to their parents. I remember parents saying when I was growing up, I brought you into this world and I will take you out. <laughs> In Exodus 2012, it says, honor your father and mother. Yeah. Then you will live a long, full life in the land the Lord your God is giving you. Remember when we had that cold, freezing, cold vertex in February for two days? Yeah. We saw love and action on those days yeah. by many people who cared about their fellow man. Yeah. There was a woman. Her name is Candace Payne. She rented out 60 rooms in a hotel for the homeless people she saw at the Tent City on Roosevelt Road near the Dan Ryan Expressway. She was a good Samaritan. Yeah. We all should be good Samaritans. Yeah. If we claim that we are Christians and love the Lord and our fellow man. You know the word, uh, the term good Samaritan, it is derived from a parable that Jesus told in the book of Luke in the New Testament. In the parable, a Jew is robbed and beaten, then left half dead on the side of the road. First a priest and then a Levite comes by, but both yes. avoid the man. Finally, a Samaritan comes by and helps him. He shows him mercy. We have to remember during those times the Samaritans and the Jews despised each other. But the Samaritan helped the injured man. But the true story here is about helping our fellow man. It doesn't matter if we are not the same race, nor the same religion, have different opinions and beliefs, don't live in the same neighborhood, grow up in poverty, or even grow up with a silver spoon in our mouths. We ought to love our fellow man regardless of our differences. A lot of the times, we see homeless people living on the street, living in homeless shelters, and some living in tent cities, and we turn our heads and we say, mm, mm, mm. What a pity. What a shame. That they have to live like that. But what we should first do is pray for our brothers and sisters who are out there in need and ask the Lord, what can I do to try to make a difference? Or help in some way. You know, God will give you an answer. But when he gives that answer, we have to be obedient yes. and follow what God says. Yes. You know why? Obedience to God proves our love for him. Yes. Jesus yes. calls us to be obedient to him because it is an act of worshiping yes. him. God awards us with his blessings when we are obedient to him. In 2 John First, in 2 John 1, 5 through 7 says, I am writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and he has commanded us to love one another, just as you heard from the beginning. Amen. So if God is commanding us to do something, we're doing what, if we do what he says, we are being obedient to him, and that pleases God. Amen. You know, Jesus calls us friend. In the Gospel of 15, 12, 14, the scripture reads, This is my commandment. Love each other in the same way I have loved you. There is no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. You know, once we start loving our Lord and Savior, he gives us self-control. He gives us perseverance, patience, knowledge, Yes. wisdom, yes. discernment, yes. and so much more. Yes. This whole love thing is a spirit of growth in Jesus Christ. Yes. And we can do this by praying, reading, meditating, and studying his word. Yes. It's not easy to love unconditionally. Right. We have to stay focused on God's word. Yes. Yes. 
in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7, it says, and a lot of people say this, a lot of pastors say this to married couples, but it applies to us too. Yes. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. Right. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. That's right. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. That's what it's all about. Yes. Love can be hard because it sometimes means we have to sacrifice our own yes. priorities yes. for others. Yes. And that's not a natural thing to do. Right. To learn to love unconditionally is an ongoing process because to love someone is a choice. Yes, Amen. yes it is. Love can always stay forever if, if, because that's a decision that we make on our own. So when you feel like no one loves you, always know that God loves you. He sent his only begotten son to die on the cross for us. He shed his blood for us on the cross. Know that God is there when you're sick and you can't seem to get well and calling out his name. Call on Jesus when your children are acting up, even the grown ones. Call on Jesus when you lose a job and looking for a job. Call on Jesus when you feel like you have lost all hope. Call on Jesus when you receive an unfavorable diagnosis from your doctor. Call on Jesus when your marriage is on shaky ground. Call on Jesus when you're feeling depressed. Call on Jesus when you feel like you lost a loved one and you are bereaving. Call on Jesus when your finances are so low and you can't even rob Paul or pay Peter. Whatever is going on in your life, call on Jesus. You know why? Because he's there. Yeah. He hears us crying. Yeah. He knows our worries and fears. Yeah. He knows what our shortcomings are. Yeah. He knows what's going on in our lives. Yeah. Our Father does not want us to worry about anything. Well, right. He cares and loves us that much. Yeah. In Matthew 6, 25, 27, it says, That is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. Yeah. Whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear, isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, but your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you more valuable to him than they are? Hmm. Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? You know, Jesus loves us so much that he provides for all our needs. He is our Jehovah Jireh. Hallelujah. In the scripture I'm referencing for this sermon, John wants, John wants us to know that Jesus is all about love. Yeah. Because to love is to know God and know that he loves us. God cares about everything that happens to us. Yes, he, he knows what is going on in our lives. He's omniscient. That means he has perfect knowledge about yes. everything. Yes. You know we serve a good God, yes. a merciful God, yes. a faithful God. Yes. A gracious God, a forgiving God, and a loving God. Let me ask you this question. Have you ever taken a baby's hand who's learning how to walk and they hold on to you for dear life for their balance? Just in case they stumble and fall? They are putting their trust in you because they know you won't let them fall. They have confidence that you won't let them fall flat on their face as long as you are holding their hand. That's how it is with our loving Father in heaven. In that same way, when we submit our way to God, we are placing our hand yes, in his. Yes, even Lord. in the times when we stumble and even sometimes fall, he will steady our path. Yes. All we have to do is hold on to God's unchanging yes. hand. In Psalms 32, 8, the scripture reads, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. Yes. You know, Jesus' love is the best remedy of all else. You know, God knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb. So know that we are each, each one of us are uniquely made. Yeah. In Psalms 139, 14, it says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know full well. So look at your neighbor and say, we are all different by God's design. Yes, we are. You don't have to like some of the foolish, ignorant, silly ways and mistakes and stupid ways that I have, but God said that you have to forgive me and love me. Yes. I thank God that he made me the way I am. I thank God that he gave me a strong, wise mother who taught me to be myself. 
I thank God for the mistakes I've made in the past and was able to repent and be forgiven. My mistakes have grown me and I can look back on them and say, thank you, Lord. That I'm not living the same sinful life I was living. I'm not where I should be. And I thank God that I am not where I was. I'm praying to continue to strive to be more Christ-like. I thank my Heavenly Father for that. I want you to also know that you can love yourself by just knowing that God made us in his own image. It's all right to say to yourself like the maid Abilene in the movie, The Help. She knew that the little girl that she was a nanny for was neglected physically and verbally abused by her mother on a daily basis. One day as she held the little girl in her lap, she told the little girl, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. So I'm saying to you, it's okay to love yourself. It's okay to sometimes look in the mirror and tell yourself, you is kind, you is smart, you is important. And you know, I saw this little poem, and this little poem is called Self Love, and it went like this. When you love yourself, you glow from the inside. You attract people who love, respect, and appreciate your energy. Everything starts with and how you feel about yourself. Start feeling worthy, valuable, and deserving of receiving the best life has to offer. Be magnetic. Yes. Let me tell you something. God loves me and he loves you. Amen. Always remember that. In Romans 8, 38, 39, it says, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, neither anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I thank you, Father God, for your goodness, your grace. I thank you, Father God, for being right here. I thank you, Father God, because I love you so much. I thank you for first loving me, Father. I can't thank you enough, Father God. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for the people that came out. I thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's all about love. We extend an invitation to discipleship. It's not an invitation to join this church. It's an invitation for you to have a relationship. With Jesus to Christ. You, you can go to any church God wants to plant you. We're not looking for church members. We're looking for relationships. So we invite you to give your life to the Lord today. We open the doors of the church. That's an invitation. It's an opportunity. Won't you come today?
hands up and we adore you. And we love you because you first loved us. I want you to join me in saying thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for calling Sister Tony. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Giving her the courage to accept your call. Thank you, God. For girding her up and strengthening her. Thank you, God. What our hearts feel right now. Thank you. And now, God, we lift her up before you. And we present her back to you, God. We, we ask that you will continue to anoint her, guide her, lead her, speak to her, give her a word for a time such as this. Thank you, sir. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. I, I am so excited. I thank you, Deep, for reminding me, for asking God for help and support. And our God is an awesome God, y'all. He, he can do anything but fail. And there's no doubt in my mind that Sister Valda Tony Walker has been called of God to preach the gospel Amen. of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, it becomes my privilege and my opportunity to license her Amen. into the gospel ministry. You'll join me, Tony. I proudly present to you this license to preach. And it reads, and he said unto them, go into all the world. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Preach the gospel to every creature. That's Mark 16, 15, granted to Valda Tony Walker, who's a member in good standing the Second Baptist Church of Elgin, Illinois, in the state of Illinois, believing that our member has been called of God to the work of the gospel ministry, we give our entire prayerful support to the improvement of the gift of preaching the gospel as divine providence may permit. We pray that the head of the church will endow our member, Sister Tony, with all grace needed to have a spiritually successful ministry done by the order of the church on this 31st day of March in the year 2019 of our Lord, the pastor's signature and the seal of the Second Baptist Amen. Church of Elgin. God bless you, my Amen. sister. Amen. And Sister Tony, there's another scripture that says the labors of the gospel are worthy of their hire. Amen. So we don't preach for a return but I'm gonna let you take Freddie to dinner. <laughs> as, as we congratulate you on your initial sermon, and we wanna give you a token from Second Baptist Church. Amen. God bless you, my sister. I thank God that he saw that I was a little worthy, that he let me speak his word. And I thank him for that. That's a privilege to me. Yes. Um, I never thought I would get a check for it because I don't feel like I should get paid for it because I just, I just like to talk about the Lord. Uh, I would like to just thank the people who came out to support me. 
I would like to thank my husband, Freddie Walker. Will my family please stand up? Amen. My husband, Freddie, and my daughter, Keisha, and my granddaughters, which is her daughter, which is Mariah, and my oldest sister, which is Barbara, and then my youngest baby sister, which is Annette, and my son is in the back, and that's Freddie, Freddie Jr., in the back. And then I would like for my friends, the one, I call them, I call them my family. I've been with them. The one that's right there that's wiping her face, we've been friends since we were six years old. <laughs> <laughs> and the other friend that's right there, her name is Pam. We've been friends since we were in sixth grade. And the other one is my friend, Tallis. We were friends with her sister-in-law, but she's still our sister of ours. We lost her in uh, 2015. And uh, she was a friend of ours. We were 12 years old also. And then also my friend, Stella. Uh, she's one of the people that I always talk to that kind of like advise me a lot. She's a deacon over at uh, Trinity, over there with Reverend Moss. And so she, she just always helps me quite a bit with walking and doing my walk and stuff. And then we have Sister Sheila Wilkins. Uh, she was the one who started out with me in terms of losing weight at first, but I've gained mine back. But anyway. <laughs> So, and also, all my other friends, will you please stand who came out to support Amen. me? Hallelujah. I see some people here from Second Baptist of Wheaton. So, and I thank you, Minister Celeste. She's from Second Baptist of Wheaton for coming out also. And then the bakers. And so I thank you all for coming out too. Thank you. Amen, amen. So that's so good to see you. We were with you, what, two weeks ago or last week? I can't keep a track of time. I know I was there. I know I was there. Amen. I know I was there. Thank you so much for coming back to see us. Amen. Amen. Now, we, we appreciate your being here. We celebrate with the grace of God that God would call Tony. Amen. Fred, you can stop crying now. All right. I thought I was going to have to get a new box of tissue. Gee. Amen. But that's what it's all about. All right. Those are tears of joy and not tears of sorrow. So we celebrate. Sister Tony, we congratulate you. We welcome you to this ministerial staff. With all our ministers, please stand. Our entire ministerial staff here, we welcome you as a part of our ministerial staff. Amen. Amen. These are all your brothers and sisters in the ministry, all right? And we're all praying for you and pulling for you and, and, and making intercessions on your behalf. Amen. All is well. All is well. All is well. All is well. God be with you until we meet again. With you. God be 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 with you. May the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit. Rest, rule, and abide with his people. Now henceforth and forever. Let every heart sing. Amen. Amen.